Shalom, beloved family. All praises to the Most High, Yahweh, in the name of His Son, Yahweh Shai. I pray everybody's well. Um, it's madness in the world, right? The scriptures tell us a lot. Also, history tells us a lot. I'm going to be reading from chapter 52 out of this book here. Code word Barbellon. And you can see the uh, the name down there. Our beloved brother David gave me this book about four years ago. Uh, then he passed away right before COVID hit. <clears throat> he was an older guy. Knew he was an Israelite. And was uh, walking accordingly. Chapter 52. I believe it's 52. L-I-I. -I, I think L is 50. All right. So this is regarding the um, the Inquisition, the Inquisition back in the 1200s. And just to give a quick definition of the Inquisition, uh, first definition is a period of prolonged and intensive questioning or investigation. Second definition is an ecclesiastical tribunal established by Pope Gregory the Ninth around 1232 for the suppression of heresy. It was active chiefly in northern Italy and southern France, becoming notorious for the use of torture. In 1542, the papal institution was reestablished to combat Protestantism, eventually becoming an organ of papal government. Okay, so <clears throat> if you can bear with me, just going to read about three, three pages of this. Okay. Centuries, or Salakia, um, chapter 52, code word Barbalon, the Inquisition in minute detail, the first Holocaust. Cruelties committed by the Inquisition, those who, survive, those who survive the first tortures are tied down upon their backs. A large cauldron turned upside down is placed upon their naked stomachs with a number of large dormice underneath. A fire is lighted at the top of the cauldron, which enrages the dormice. As they are unable to creep under the edges of the cauldron, they burrow into the entrails of the victim. And the reason why I want to bring this out, this Inquisition, is that <clears throat> this is the fourth beast at work. Then and now. And you see things leading up to a similar scenario as history wants to repeat itself for this next inquisition. And what were they trying to combat? Heresy. All right. You see on the social media platforms, you're being censored. If you uh, have a opposing view to uh, the elite institutions of rulership of this world. Okay. You know, so division is created. Chaos is, is created. All right. Fear is, is put on everyone. And those with a sound mind to see what's going on. You know, the, the only reason that certain people know what's going on and are resisting. I want to say the most high has woke them up to see what the truth is. And the most high, if you are awoke to what is going on here, current day, with the with the mechanics and the way that this 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 kingdom that's in rulership operates, that's the Lord. And and he put this on you, and you you're required to be an instrument for the truth. Okay? And even in all the lies, we can only do things for the truth's sake, right? So a lie helps out the truth. Now, I'm not saying go tell a lie, but you see some of these politicians out here, they have told you lies. And in their lies, once you figure it out, it's like, oh, well, here's what the truth is, this, that, and the third. Okay? Like, look at this. They're muzzling everyone. They want everyone muzzled. They want everyone with uh, their new fangled uh, immunization, immunization juice into them. Okay? Some people ain't going for that. You know, the Most High has given us an immune system and has given us 
nature and has given us our breath, okay? Next thing you know, they're going to be one. Oh, everybody has to get this artificial breath. You know, I'm just being facetious. But then, where will it stop? Okay? For nearly six centuries, wrote Peter de Rosa, not one of the 80 popes from the 13th century to the 19th said a word against the diabolical machinery of the Inquisition. Rather, they each added their own cruel touch to the awful machinery of death. The Church of Rome, at times, even waded through the blood of Roman Catholics to get to the Protestant heretics. The real object of the Inquisition, it has been asserted, was to discover errors in doctrine, to stop them from being propagated, and to endeavor to enlighten and to win back those who had been perverted by the apostles of error. So says a Catholic apologist. We are even told that the popes were obligated to employ stratagem in order to protect the penitent heretics from the merciless severity of the Inquisition. But the fact is that the Holy See in 1215 at the fourth lateral council in the third canon of that council declared that the heretics who are condemned shall be handed over to the secular arm in order that they may receive their merited punishment. In the manners and customs of the Middle Ages, indeed one historian giving a detailed account of trials before the tribunals of the Inquisition tells us that the civil punishment was only inflicted after the day of the church's mock trial called the auto da fe, or act of faith. In 1252, the Pope even made a decree stipulating the exact details of how the prisoners of the Inquisition were to be tortured, including children from the ages 12 and upwards. But for all its horrors, it was Papish Spain that refined to an art the punishments Catholics invented to use against those who refused to accept their faith. In, in 1481, during the reign of Ferdinand and Isabella, the Inquisition was provided with a new code of regulations, giving it even more formidable powers. And it reads, It was then that I got the name of the Holy Office and was superintended by a Grand Inquisitor General and a Council. When the Holy Office had a heretic or anyone suspected of being one, after being arrested, its agents stripped the accused person of all he had about his person and took a detailed inventory of his clothing and furniture. The money so seized, whether in gold or silver, belonged by right to the tribunal and went to defray the costs of the procedure. These formalities over the accused, the these formalities over, the accused was taken to prison. Of prisons, the Inquisition had several kinds. First, the common prison, in which were confined persons accused merely of ordinary misdemeanor and who consequently were allowed to communicate with their families and friends. Second, the prison of mercy or of penitence, which was set apart for those who were to be detained only temporary. Third, the intermediate prison, reserved for those who had committed some ordinary delinquency, which brought them within the jurisdiction of the Holy Office. See, so you have to be brought into the jurisdiction of the Holy Office. Fourth, the secret prison, the inmates of which were kept in solitary confinement. On the day of trial, after a long interrogatory interrogation, if the prisoner failed to avow his guilt, he was taken to the torture chamber, preceded by the Inquisitor and the four mysterious men in black. Here he was again exhorted to abjure his errors, and if, if these fresh entreaties were powerless to move him, he was handed over to the torturer, who put him to the torture with one of the four agencies employed by justice the cord, the scourge, fire, or water, okay? We all seen Braveheart, you know? That's what 
two, three hundred years after this. Or was it around the same time? I think Braveheart was based around 1500s. I could be wrong, though. It could be 1100s. I don't know, but there you go. And we all seen those Middle Age movies where people were getting tortured. But this one up here, the first one I read, where they put the cauldron over your belly and, and light a fire on it, and then the rats eat your eat get their way into your guts. That's pretty terrible and messed up. Like, let's go catch some mice so we can do this and that. Like, who, come on, man. Uh, the cord, the scourge, fire, or water. All right. Reader. We cannot find expressions strong enough to characterize the brutish raw violence to which the Church of Rome had recourse with a view to establishing her anti-Christian religion. John Lorthrop Motley, speaking of papal persecution in the Netherlands, says, Upon February 16th of 1568, a sentence of the Holy Office, the Inquisition, condemned all the inhabitants of the Netherlands to death as heretics the most concise death warrant that was ever framed three millions of people men women and children were sentenced to the scaffold although not put into full effect oliver's contemporary grotius states that a hundred thousand genuine martyrs suffered death in the netherlands for conscience's sake Gibbon declared that this number executed in a single province and a single reign far exceeded that of the primitive martyrs in the space of three centuries and of the Roman Empire. More than 50 million members of the human family are estimated to have been slaughtered under the sanction of the Catholic Church. Uh, and that's from a, a excerpt of Dowling, History of Rome, Book 8. And that's John Dowling. Is that John Dowling? Uh, John Dowling. Dowling. D-O-W-L-I-N-G. History of Rome. How could such a degraded, inhumane, barbaric system claim to be the religion of Jesus Christ? Where in the Bible does it say that the life of the heretic should be taken? In Rome today, you will find on the outside of the Lateran Church a plaque. A plaque depicting Pope Innocent VIII's 1487 order against the Christian wildernesses. It says Vaudois or Al. Begensis, in these words that that abominable sect of, of malignant to be crushed like venomous snakes why they would not accept the Pope as their head and that also comes from uh, a book written by John Dowling History of Romanism book, book 6 chapter 5 section 62 they would not accept the Pope as their head Something similar to me happened. I was in an Israelite camp, and I would not accept any other head than Yahushai, and I decided to leave. And then they, they wanted to have an inquisition on me. All right. R.W. Thompson writes, The Waldenesses were burned. They were cast into damp and horrid dungeons. They were smothered in crowds in mountain caverns. Mothers and babies and old men and women together, they were sent out into exile in the winter night, unclothed and unfed, to climb the snowy mountains. They were hurled over the rocks. Their houses and lands were taken from them. Their children were stolen to be indoctrinated with the religion which they abhorred. Rapacious individuals were sent among them to strip them of their property, to persecute and exterminate them thousands old men women and children were hung quartered broken upon the wheel or burned alive and their property confiscated so look what's going on in the world right now with uh with uh the bar association members 
the lobbyists, people who are lobbying the Congress, um, uh, all of these gigantic real estate contracts, okay? The MVA in uh, 1861, I think it was, there was a court, a Supreme Court case, it was called Downs v. Bidwell. And it identified two different governments at work in America. One was an unconstitutional government that was a corporate thing that was created called the United States. And then the other one is the constitutional republic that's not a corporation. That is the supreme law of this land. And it's overlaid and it has the same name, United States, United States. Deception, confusion, and chaos, and deception, and contracts. You better watch out. We all better watch out. Some of us is all too late. You know what I mean? But it's never too late to repent and get out of it. All praise to the Most High. All right? And then you saw that same thing happen in uh, Nazi Germany. You know what I mean? They pulled their scapegoats out and persecuted them, and then reaped all of their property and all of their substance, you know? Reaped and raped. All right, in uh, tw this is a uh, next page. I I'm gonna I'm gonna I'm gonna read on until I get to a point on on the, on the next page over here. In 1209, July 22nd, Pope Innocent the third caused the Walden Waldenesian town of Bizaris be taken by assault and made a scene of terrible carnage. His crusaders gave no quarter. 20,000 inhabitants were massacred without distinction of age or sex and 7,000 were burnt in a church in which they had taken refuge. In a few decades, hundreds of thousands of Walden, Waldenes, Waldenes dissenters were killed by the Pope's army. Two cities of considerable size, Be Beziers and Carcassonne, were destroyed. Their occupants, thrown from the top of high cliffs, hanged, disemboweled, pierced through repeatedly, drowned, put out to be torn by dogs, burnt alive, and even crucified. One victim, Paul Garnier, one victim, Paul Garnier was slowly sliced into pieces at Rora. Thomas Marguetti was mutilated in an indescribable manner at Mir Miraboco. And Susan Haquin cut into bits at La Torre. Susan Rostagnol was slit open from the legs to the bosom and left to perish on the road between Aral and Lucerna. Anne Carbonnier was impaled, was impaled and carried thus on a pike as a standard from San Giovanni to La Torre. Daniel Rambaud at Paisano had his nails torn off, then his fingers chopped off, then his feet and hands, then his arms, then his legs, with each successive refusal on his part to abjure the gospel. In June 1556, Bartolome Hector of Poitiers was burned at Turin for having sold copies of the Bible to the shepherds of the Alps. Said the same author on Saturday, 24th, April 1655, at four o'clock in the morning, the signal for the general massacre of the Vaudois was given. Sick persons and old people, men and women, were burned alive in their houses or hacked to pieces or mutilated in horrible ways or, fr or flayed alive or exposed, bound, and dying to the sun's noontide heat or to the ferocious animals. Some were stripped naked, bound up in the form of a ball, and then rolled over the precipices. Next, Next, after massacre and abduction and incendiary, came incendiarianism. Monks and priests and other zealous propagandists went about with lighted torches and projectiles burning down the houses. A sister had seen her brother's mouth filled with gunpowder 
and the head blown to atoms. These people, so simple, so Christian, were made a prey to the demon of the popery, cruel in its superstition beyond the cruelty of the most barbarous savages. I shall next quote from one who was intimately acquainted with the Inquisition, Don Juan Antonio Lorente, derived from the original documents in the archives of the Supreme Tribunal and those of the subterranean tribunals of the Holy Office. I quote Lorente from his critical history of the Inquisition of Spain, cited in page 207 of History of the Reign of Ferdinand and Isabella, Volume 1, by William H. Prescott. Don Juan Antonio Lorente is the only writer who has succeeded in completely lifting the veil from the dread mysteries of the Inquisition. It is obvious how very few could, could be competent to this task, since the proceedings of the Holy Office were shrouded in such impenetrable secrecy that even the prisoners who were arraigned before it, as has been already stated, were kept in ignorance of their own processes. Even such of its functionaries as have at different times pretended to give its transactions to the world have confined themselves to an historical outline with, with merge notices, of, with mere notices of such parts of its internal discipline as might be safely disclosed to the public. Lorente was... Secretary of the Tribunal of Madrid from 1790 to 1792, his official station consequently afforded him every facility for an acquaintance with the most recondite affairs of the Inquisition. And on its suppression, at the close of 1808, he devoted several years to a careful investigation of the registers of the tribunals, both on the both of the capital and the provinces as well as such other original documents contained within their archives as had not hitherto been opened to the light of day. Lorente thus speaks in his preface, in order to write an exact history it was necessary to be an inquisitor, in, in, inquisitor or secretary of the inquisitor. In this way alone could be seen the bulls of the popes, the orders of the kings, the decisions of the council of the Inquisition, the original trials, and the other papers of its archives. Perhaps I am the only one who at the present time can possess all of these documents. I was secretary of the Inquisition of the Court of Madrid in the years of 1789, 1790, and 1791. I knew its establishment sufficiently to consider its vicious consider it vicious in its origin constitution and laws in spite of the apologetic writings in its favor i immediately devoted myself to the collection of papers abridging the most voluminous uh, abridging the most voluminous but copying literally all that was important my perseverance in this labor and in that of collecting all the suppressed books and pamphlets that I could find among the depositories of former inquisitors provided me with a great number of interesting documents. I at last obtained the whole of the archives in 1809 when the tribunal was abolished. I hope that I shall not be thought arrogant in saying that I alone can satisfy the curiosity of those who wish to know the true history of the Inquisition of Spain. I merely mean that I alone possess the materials for that history, the abundance of which will, I hope, supply in great degree my want of talent. And remember, this was from his book, uh, Lorente's book, Don Juan Antonio Lorente's book called the Critical History of the Inquisition of Spain, or no, from his Critical History of the Inquisition of Spain, cited in page 207 of the History of the Reign of Ferdinand Isabella, Volume 1, by William H. Prescott. So it wasn't 
and Don Juan Antonio Lorente's book. It was William H. Prescott's book. And he just cited everything that Lorente had, all right? In the early chapters of his work, Lorente gives a sketch of the ancient Inquisition from its origin in 1203 down to the establishment of the modern, modern tribunal by Ferdinand V in 1481. Lorente, with all his opportunities, was able to collect but me, mere details of the ancient Inquisition, its existence during the Dark Ages, being unfavorable to critical inquiry. To begin to understand the scale of atrocity of the inquisitors, of the inquisitions, consider the career of Torquemada, 1420-1498, Grand Inquisitor of Spain, Tor Torquemada. During his 18-year term, well over 100,000 heresy cases were tried in Spain alone, of which 97,322 were imprisoned and or lost their property. At least 90,000 were tortured, many to death, and 10,220 were burned. These are the numbers so large they seem incredible, but, but which were given by Lorente, the Spanish historian of the Inquisition, who was well qualified to judge their accuracy. If we take only half of Torquemada's rate of 5,975 victims per year, and that's, that's more than one a day, well over one a day, you know, that's like abortions, right? Some doctors got 3,000 abortions under their belt in one year. Victims per year, 5,000, all right, we just, if we only take half of Torquemada's rate of 5,975 victims per year, people in prison, robbed, tortured, or killed by the church, and multiply it for the six major Western Christian powers, Spain, France, England, Germany, Italy, and Slavic countries, over 500 years, roughly 1150 to 1650, we reach a figure of nearly 9 million victims of the various inquisitions. This does not include groups slaughtered in Europe by crusaders, or by general degree, it also does not include those threatened, harassed, lynched, or punished without trial, such as known Jews. These victims add millions more to the body count. We can easily say that the Christian Inquisitions killed at least 10 million and cruelly ruined the lives of at least 10 million more. Sober Reader, the seventh chapter of Daniel, has been precisely fulfilled in the Catholic Church. The fourth beast shall be the fourth kingdom upon the earth. It shall devour the whole earth, tread it down, and break it to pieces. I quote next, Gadaran Guinness Romanism, Gadaran Guinness Romanism and the Reformation, 1881. Um, I might I might continue this on another time because I don't want to have be sitting down here for an hour doing this, but maybe I should. All right. Are the saints getting worn out? Are the saints getting worn out? I'd say. I'd say. And now look at the current Inquisition, right? Let's just take a look at it. Just real quick. All right. So you've got a worldwide plague, we'll say. A worldwide plague. And... You know, we had uh, over here with they, our government rolled out Operation Warp Speed and then hurried up and busted out whatever this uh, immuno juice was, immuno jab juice was, and then it was, it was like, all right, yeah, it's cool. Everybody just, everybody needs to go get it. And it's like, look at what's happening in the EU. You know, you're talking about going door to door with the military. Look what's going on in Australia. You got millions of people out in the street. People are protesting all over the whole world. Um, rebellion is as is a as witchcraft and idolatry. All right. Look at the, look look at the history of idolatry. All right. We've all been and these people here who 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 were victims of the Inquisition, 
And probably still to this day, they got the Inquisition going on, man. A lot of secrets. A lot of secrets. But look what's coming out. You got this whole book about it. And there's other books to this volume. This is book two. You know, we'll have to see what's up with the rest of these and maybe do many, many more sit-downs. Uh, wow. Yeah, I'm going to do some more in, in these books here. But let's see what they was talking about with this fourth beast. Let's see what they was talking about with this fourth beast. Daniel, where you at, bro? Daniel, chapter seven. Daniel chapter 7. Then I would know 7 and 19. 7 and 17. These great beasts, which are four, are four kings, which shall rise out of the earth. But the saints of the Most High shall take the kingdom. Wonder why. Wonder why he had his inquisition against the saints. But the saints shall take the kingdom and possess the kingdom forever and ever and forever, even ever. Then I would know the truth of the fourth beast, which was diverse from all the others, exceeding dreadful, whose teeth were of iron and his nails of brass, which devoured and break in pieces and stamped the residue with his feet. And of the ten horns that were in his head and the other which came up and before whom three fell, even of that horn that had eyes and a mouth that spoke very great things and whose look was more stout than his fellows. I mean, this fourth beast is bad, y'all. This fourth beast is bad. And I beheld in the same horn made war with the saints and prevailed against them. What they say, 10 million? And that was being conservative? Until, and this is our hope, family until the ancient of days came and judgment was given to the saints of the most high and the time came that the saints possessed the kingdom now, who is the ancient of days the most high god the father thus he said the fourth beast shall be the fourth kingdom upon the earth which shall be diverse from all other kingdoms that shall devour the whole earth and shred it down and break it to pieces. All right. And all of y'all Americans that's thinking that Trump and, and some, some white hat group is out here doing something. You dead wrong, bro. And you, they, you turning them into a, an idol and you're guilty and there's blood on your hands. You need to stop worshiping that idol and start getting on your knees and repenting and praying to the most high. In the name of his precious son, Yahweh Shai. All right? And break up the whole earth. Hold up. And, and, and devour the whole earth and shall tread it down and break it into pieces. All right? The poisoning of the air. We still get chemtrail, bro. That's what shook That's what shook my cage. After Trump got in the office, we still getting chemtrail. He pulls out of the Paris Climate Accords, but we out here still getting chemtrail. I'm watching a cooking video of a brother out in Azerbaijan. They chemtrailing out in Azerbaijan. They kept trailing out in Kenya. You ain't getting away from this. You can't escape this. The Most High is forcing you to put your faith in Him. The Most High and all the children, all the torturing of the children and the abortions and the kidnapping and the adrenochrome harvesting and then all the symbols and symbolisms they put in all the movies and shows and joke around about it try to normalize this crap. Like it's okay. It's not okay. The Most High is making it really easy to not love this world. And the Most High is forcing you to put all of this idolatry aside and focus your faith on the, in the Lord. Faith, Abraham, Noah, Enoch, Daniel, Elijah. Faith. That's a lot of you forgetting a lot. It's not very good acoustics out here in this kitchen. All right. And the ten horns 
7 and 22. And the ten horns out of this kingdom are ten kings that shall arise. And another shall rise after them. And he shall be diverse from the first, but he shall subdue three kings. And he shall speak great words against the Most High, and shall wear out the saints of the Most High, and think to change times and laws. So who changed time from being the month? Moon means month. And the new moon is a new month. Who changed times? It always was these guys. Uh, the Gregorian calendar, right? The Julian calendar, right? Man, come on. Change times and laws. All of the lobbying and all the legislation and all the bar association members that's running around trying to put laws in place that cause you to be muzzled, that cause you to have your temple be violated, that cause you to have to have, uh, look how they game us. Look how they game us with your mortgage and your bills and your, your car note and all this madness. It's like you got to go to work or, or everything's going to crumble out from underneath you and you're going to be destitute. And then while you're at work, they indoctrinate your children into their philosophies and, and crap because they lobbied the American Federation of Teachers and all these other organizations that control what gets taught in the schools. Okay? And I'll tell you what, some of these young boys out here, there's no guidance for them. They're being lewd. They're looking at whatever they want on the internet. And then I, you bring it up to, to parental uh, units. And they're just like, oh, they're boys. That's what boys ages 9 to 13 do. Nah. Nah. Okay. This, this, is, this place is corrupt. The love of this world is enmity with God. And they shall be given into his hand until a time and times and the dividing of times. But the judgment shall sit and they shall take away his dominion to consume and to destroy it unto the end. And the kingdom and the dominion and the greatness of the kingdom under the whole heaven shall be given to the people of the saints of the most high, whose kingdom is an everlasting kingdom and all dominions shall serve and obey him. Hitherto is the end of the matter. As for me, Daniel, my cogitations much troubled me and my countenance changed in me, but I kept the matter in my heart. This is a heartbreaking situation on the earth because we all really basically just want to love one another, at least those that have empathy. And it goes deeper than just the physicality of all this inquisition. I mean, there's there's demonic things going on in the spiritual back channels that will we ever know? Pray against it. Rebuke it. Okay? All right. So here we go again with the inquisition of the whole earth. Um, what did they just do the other day? Oh, the Pope came out and said, oh, it's time to... Uh, divide Israel or something, something along those matters and talking about giving the Temple Mount to uh, Islam. These are just speculations that I've seen. And, uh, you know, they're going to try to fake fulfill prophecy with this third temple. As far as I'm concerned, the body of Yahweh Shai, the body of Hamashiach is the third temple. The tabernacle of David is this generation of kings and priests who have the law written in their heart. They're going to be a day where no man going to have to teach his neighbor. Yeah, stealing's wrong. Yeah, murdering is wrong. Yeah, coveting your neighbor's stuff is wrong. Adultery is wrong. Dude, who taught you that? And then your house side comes and says, love your God with all your heart and love your neighbor. And all of the law and all the prophets hang on those two. Did Moses need to wear fringes to remind him of the law? Did Yahweh wear fringes to remind him of the law? 
Lord willing, the Ancient of Days in Daniel 7 and 22, Lord willing, this comes sooner than later. Hasten the day. All praise to Yahweh by Shimi Love to the fam.